whenever the shadow of the earth 3 dlc is going to drop and hopefully it's going to be sooner than later as a fan of the series itself we are anticipating the newest dlc of the elder ring itself that has been nominating and called himself the shadow of the earth 3. um before we can proceed as a community of course as a fan of the franchise itself there's a few things that the soulsborne community is going to need to address towards for software and for software itself is going to be need to address towards the community itself there's one key aspect within the shadow of the earth tree that i personally as a fan as a long-standing fan of the series itself has been questioning myself if it comes to how shadow of the earth tree of the elder ring dlc is going to solve this moving forwards and it's the key aspect of balance itself as we know as we are playing right now into the elder ring itself we have a three category of type of players itself if it comes to the source community itself we have the casual gamers you have the god gamers and of course the newest rpg of a software lovers we're gonna go and depth it out in this uh, podcast beside the obvious is of course the tier level if it comes to player experience in the soulsborne community itself there's one thing that we know for a fact is that for software is well known within the community and for delivering one of his best works into his deal dlc's itself if you think about bloodborne for example uh the Hunter's Dream, um, the Dark Souls, Arthurius DLCs, these are one of the many amazing DLCs that For Software has brought into the franchise and the representative based games that they uh, produce at that time itself. And the level of difficulty in those games as well has been increased significantly when the DLC was introduced for the first time for those representative games. Knowing that past history and knowing the trajectory of the Elder Ring itself, and also knowing we are right now getting towards the two year gap between the Elder Ring DLCs and the Elder Ring release itself, it poses a lot of new challenges for in terms of accessibility for players itself. So from software will need to consider the placement and the entry point of the expansion within the game itself. The Elder Ring secondary anniversary is steadfastly approaching our dates moving forwards. Many of us, of course, are hoping for a 25 February release, but as we are proceeding, coming closer towards that date, it's something that we need to be uh, honest towards ourselves within the community that's likely not happening. But we're thinking we can hope maybe on the 25 February that we get a um, certain form of a teaser trailer or just a trailer that will give us an indication which the direction that from software is heading towards to or give us another hope and anticipation and lore material that we can dive ourselves from the very small teaser trailer that the lore hunters within our community can address and teach us moving forwards but beside all those kind of things even though it's going to drop hopefully this year there's one thing that the souls community and for software it will need to address if it comes to how they're going to develop the dlc itself that is of course the accessibility of the players itself when they return for the very very first time in the lands between as we know in the past if anything can come close to the, any education that we know from for software for software usually save its absolutely best work for its expansion itself dlc suggests like as the bloodborne the old hunters and the dark souls astorius of the apsi contain some of the finest enemies and areas for those we, we perspective games have to offer until this day this bodes extremely well for shadow of the earth 3 and if the quality is in par from the base game itself this should indeed be something special for us to wait any longer at least it's worth our wait moving forward even if Shadow of the Earth re released in February and it's highly unlikely, which is far from certain given the lack of information um, about the official release date, it will still be launched two years since the very first release of the Shadow of the Earth 3 itself and base game Elder Ring. This represents a very substantial large gap between the dates of any other Soulsborne game expansion and it bring of course a pretty big problem from software try to fix moving forwards. For software, Soulsborne series is notorious for being one of the toughest and collection of games ever. The brutality ever comes to the steep learning curve and distinct lack of hand-holding means that a lot of players must work hard to overcome them. That is uncertainly true for Elder Ring itself, which despite several ways players can make the challenge a lot easier, but they will still demand a high level of skill to be able to complete these type of games. 
Typically, players uh, build certain form of momentum and play regularly and gain experience by repeating certain form of mechanics. They learn the games and well enough to be able to play it with hand folded with one arm behind their back. But right now we're speaking about two years gap between Elder Ring release and the Shadow of the Earth Tree, which means that usually they've been a regular return to the game every month well and well, which is possible giving it immense replayability. A proportion of the players will have developed a degree of rustiness when they're first going to re-pick this game back up. They will need to relearn the mechanics itself and sh shake off the cobwebs and of course learn the from software brutal -like experience itself. This DLC is probably going to be placed somewhere mid or late in the story itself. We will allow players either to complete replay the game itself or by sheer luck you're gonna find yourself in the right place into the game itself and you can re-enter the dlc easier but even though within the community itself we have three different level of players itself like i mentioned previously before you have your standard soulspawn uh, player itself who has been probably came from bloodborne dark souls or even secure itself who knows the mechanics of the games, who knows the tricks of the games, and it really doesn't matter for her or him and whenever they come back to the game because they already have the finger spits rule, like the German people say, within their hands already. They're not the god tier gamers, but they have an easier time adapting in every single Sourcebone game because they're already a veteran in towards this game. The second tier level of gamers we have are the, the casual Joe. Gamers who probably came from other RPGs and probably are a fan of Gandalf who loves coming to the Elder Ring DLCs or the Elder Ring universe or just in general the Soulsborne universe. Nine out of ten times there was our gamers who play with magic and of course they love the mix max every single skill that they have. These are gamers who are probably replaying this game significantly and by me making this review they're probably right now at level 300, 200 or above. Those are the type of gamers that they really don't care about truly learning the mechanics itself or even challenging himself in a way that is significant and meaningful towards the Souls games and community itself. And the concept that we all love to say, get good. And then you have those unique gamers itself that is well known within the community itself where we all have the one streamer itself that we truly admire in form of the skill that they possess. We call them the God tier gamers. Those are the gamers that, that play the Elder Ring of any Soulsborne game on the Witch class, my favorite class, from start to finish on the level 1. And I'm not talking about level 1 using a cheesy overpowered weapon, no. They only play level 1 with a club from start to finish and challenge every single boss there. We all know this god tier gamers itself. And knowing those three level of experience it comes to gaming and of course the experience that every gamers have within the Elder Ring itself, from software is going to need to address how you're going to put all of those playstyles in towards the DLCs. So that's what I wanted to address maybe in a certain form of a formula that we can expect moving forward. The one thing is for damn sure, the Elder Ring DLC will be extremely hard. So how do we balance all of that? Because balance is, was the main issue if it comes to the Elder Ring DLC because certain bosses within the Elder Ring base game are severely unbalanced. Some of them were doing way too much damage that was supposed to compared to the other bosses we know from the Soulsborne universe itself, Dark Souls, Sekiro or Bloodborne. And some bosses in Elder Ring they were easily were able to one shot you no matter how how your skill level were. So how do you define all of that? How do you bring the balance back towards a gamer and a player with me making this podcast is already level 200 towards a gamer like myself who is a rich player who only level his character to maximum 125 to a gamer for example who only play a level 1 itself. So how do we balance all of that? One of the many solutions that have been popping on my mind when drafting this podcast is an option that probably is going to be the most feasible and feasible considering the large size that the DLC is going to have is that a Shadow of the Earth Tree could be a standalone expansion that can be played separately from the main game itself. That would probably fix the above uh, applied issue itself when it comes to the player experience and the gap between a god tier player and a normal 
tier player itself who had just experienced the game for the first time. They will fix of course the issue of balance if it comes to the Elder Ring DLC itself how every single player and game is going to approach it. Either way that is a problem that from software is going to need to find the proper formula if it comes to how they're gonna address the DLC itself. By putting it in the form of a standalone expansion itself I think probably that will fix the issue if it comes to balance at the same time um, keeping the, the same track records from the for software usual formula if it comes to how they approach the games. Either way there is something that is very interesting a form of a topic that we are going to need to address and of course talk as a community itself of how the Elder Ring DLC is going to need to be approached as we are going to enter it hopefully this year itself. Either way I'm your host Jai Charlotte Memnon, welcome once again to Ashen Games. I don't know how is the best issue that we can find to solve this balance if it comes to the Elder Ring DLC and hopefully you have your thoughts on the comments down below. But you think that it is the best option for, for software, or at least the best formula to take if it comes to finding the right balance if it comes to how we're going to play and approach the Elder Ring DLC itself. I'm your host Yashiro Memnon once again. Welcome to my gaming channel. Merci beaucoup pour m'écouter. And hopefully I can see you all on the next podcast moving forward. Thank you very much again. Merci beaucoup. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe yourself. And I'll see you all in my next live stream on Twitch yourself. One love. One love only. Peace.